What a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time to receive what I have to say. Um, I have been talking to people, writing books about, writing blog posts about, writing articles about, um, coaching people about how to create success for the last quarter of a century. Um, what I've learned in that time, and I learned it again today, that it's almost impossible to say anything new about the conscious creation of success. So everything that I can possibly say at some point in what I'm going to say is going to end up sounding like a cliché. And I knew that before I started. I didn't even know what I was going to talk about today. I came in unprepared. <laughs> um, and at lunchtime I decided what I was going to say, and it's something I've said before many times. Uh, and because I knew I was going to talk about a bunch of cliches, I decided that um, I'm going to start with the biggest cliche of all, which is Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Okay. And what he said about, and excuse me, ladies, I know we're in a minority here, but I'm going to say it anyway. Anything the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Okay. One of the most profound statements ever made by any human being. I don't care what you've read or where you've read it, that one concise little sentence is perfect. Okay? Because it says anything, the mind of man or woman, can conceive and believe it can achieve. Every word, every word is impactful. Every single word is perfect. So. I'm going to get more into that in a minute, but in the meantime, I want to start off by um, stating my intention, because I believe intentionality is important. My intention of um, being here today to speak with you is to be an empowerment agent, to contribute in some way to the value of your journey, and to in some way add value to your life. That's my intention in being here. So, let's start off with whatever. It is my firm belief that the universe is set up to allow whatever <laughs> can be imagined to unfold. That is my firm belief. And I think if you look at the physical expression of the universe and the way that it is constantly expanding and all things that are being revealed to us as we expand our own imagination, our own scientific abilities, our own way of looking at the universe, I think we can see that it is an endlessly growing, expanding expression of consciousness. Okay? And that anything that consciousness can conceive can come to be. Okay? The universe is set up to allow that to happen. All right. So we, as individual human beings, have a mind. We're quite proud of that. Some of us overly so, but <laughs> <laughs> we are quite proud of the fact that we have a mind. We often make the mistake of thinking that because we have a brain, we have a mind, and because we have a mind, we have consciousness, and we are self-conscious and self-aware of each other. This is totally false. It's a false philosophical precept by people who believe in the materialistic thing that building blocks build something else, right? Consciousness exists. Individual minds are an aspect of universal consciousness. They take place primarily within the human brain, our particular mind, within our human brain. Our mind does not emerge from our brain. Our brain comes to be so that the mind can inhabit it, right? The same way some people believe that the body comes to be so that the soul can inhabit it, okay? Anyway, so because the mind is resonant with the consciousness that enables the universe to exist in the first place, it has the same power of creativity as universal consciousness. Same in kind, not necessarily quantity. <laughs> All right? Because our minds are capable of engendering a new thought, we are creative creatures. What we create in our imagination, we can make manifest in the world, right? If we believe whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Right? 
So <clears throat> first, pot, first step in the process of conscious creation is to create an ideal, something that you would like to have manifest in your world, whatever that ideal is. When I talk about creating success, I don't mean material success. I, I define success as being a holistic blend of physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and material well-being. I don't believe that anybody who focuses is only on one of those five aspects ever achieves any measure of success. You can have a billion dollars and have a miserable emotional, mental, and spiritual life. You're not wealthy at all. You're not successful at all. Right. You can have this wonderful, glorious spiritual relationship with your creator, if that's the way you talk about spirituality to yourself, and not be able to feed, feed your children. That's not successful either, is it? Right, okay. So, the first step, create the ideals. And despite all the theory about all that stuff, fancy stuff I just said to you about consciousness and mind, Everything needs to be practical in order for it to, to be applicable and realizable in your life. So the first step, create the ideals, and the best way to do this, write them down by hand in all five areas, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, material. Write them down. We don't have any time today to talk about why, what the neuromuscular magic of writing is all about. Doesn't help to type it on the computer. Write it by hand, right? Write it again and again and again and again until you achieve clarity about what those ideals are. And they will get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter till you have a phrase or a sentence about a set of ideals, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, material ideals. You will have a set of ideals. And when they come and they click, they will resonate with you. Right? You will know that those are yours, not something that was handed down to you by your parents or your society or your teachers or your peer group or what you've been told to expect for yourself in some self-development seminar. Something that resonates with you <coughs> in your heart, in your soul. Find those ideals, hold fast to them, and then fall in love with those ideals. Let them become your passion. Let them become your why for getting out of bed in the morning. And a couple of people spoken today about vibration. Here's why that's important. Everything in the universe is vibration, right? The universe is a myriad, a matrix of interlocking vibrations. Our interaction with the universe is vibrational. When we think, we emit electromagnetic waves. We know that, right? We, what happens is those electromagnetic waves are broadcast out into the universe, they interfere with the existing pattern, and they create an interference pattern, and that interference pattern is what we see as being reality. Our emotional energy, also mentioned today, more cliches, is ten times stronger than our mental energy. When we wrap emotional energy and mental energy together, we become truly powerful creators conscious creators okay? when that energy interacts with what the potential that is allowed for by the universe we can actually make things happen right we can create stuff in the universe doesn't matter what language you use make it manifest go out and do things in order to produce results however you want to say it okay Combining mental and emotional energy, and the emotional energy, let's call it love, right? Call it desire, profound desire to see your ideals made manifest, made real, become part of your actuality, however you want to say it. When you combine those two energies, you become a truly powerful human being, capable of doing a lot of things in the world. And magically, you attract stuff to you. People, resources, money, circumstances, all comes towards you to help you effectuate your ideals. Why? Because you become charismatic, because your energy is pure, intentional, focused on ideals. Not the lack of, right? Not the suffering, not the struggle, 
you're focused on the ideals, what you want to have real in your world, and that becomes charismatic energy, okay? Step three, affirm the reality of your ideals. Where were the steps? Belief. <laughs> You've got to convince yourself that it's real. Here's the problem. We spend all day, every day, talking to ourselves, and 99% of the time our lips are not moving. All right? We have this subconscious mental chatter going on. It started the day we were born. All the noise that was picked up. For those of you who watch TV, turn that idiot box off. All right? You're still picking up subconscious mental chatter. Okay? That subconscious mental chatter is actually you describing your reality to yourself. Right? And if that chatter is a bunch of garbage that you've picked up along the way, you've got to learn how to turn that off and reprogram that subconscious to start talking about things that are important and true for you. Right? So, all day long we talk. All day long we have to affirm the reality of our ideals, our ideals, not just to ourselves, not just through our own subconscious, but to the other people that we interact with. Okay? Don't talk about the weather or the, sp I mean you can, okay, in the bar you can talk about what your favorite sports team did. But when people say to you, who are you, what are you doing, talk about your ideals, what you're in the process of creating, what your intentions are, what your life is, what your purpose is. These are the things that impact other people's lives. These are the things that tell them that you know what you're about. Right? If you look at the lives of successful people, they're always talking about what they are creating. Right? I watched an interview with Elon Musk, who's a terrible public speaker. Terrible public speaker, but he never strayed from talking about what he is creating. And he said something really critical in that interview too. He said, the interviewer asked him a question about what drives him. He said, what drives me? I want to see a better future for myself and my fellow human beings. And I work towards that every single day. That's what he said. That's amazing, isn't it? How many people say that in the world? I mean, we do, right? <laughs> Not everybody does that. Anyway, so affirm the reality. Step one. Create the vision. Step two, fall in love. Step three, affirm the reality of what you're doing. Convince yourself through your own subconscious self-talk that what you are creating in ideals is more real than all of that history that you've left behind what it used to be once upon a time. Step four, three minutes, got to hurry up. Be congruent. What does be congruent with your ideals mean? Be congruent means ask yourself all day, every single day, ask yourself, what is my intention in thinking what I am thinking, in believing what I am believing, in doing what I am doing? Why am I doing what I am doing right now? Why am I thinking what I'm thinking? I, went for a, I, I get up in the morning, I go for a long walk. I'm walking along, I'm thinking about something totally stupid. I can't even remember what it was. So I went, why on earth am I thinking about that? I have a full day of creativity ahead of me. I should be thinking about the things that I need to accomplish today, things I need to do. Why am I thinking about that nonsense? We need to learn to start doing that all the time, right? Why am I doing what I am doing? Why am I thinking what I'm thinking? All right, this last step, already been mentioned a couple times. Robert's mentioned it too. Gratitude. Start each day with an expression of gratitude for all the gifts you have. First thing in the morning, first thing. I mean, you can pee first. <laughs> first thing, start saying thank you for all the blessings in your life. All right? Your day will be way better than if you don't do that. Believe me, right? Everything will be better in your life if you just start each day saying thank you. I mean, you can, and you have, I tell people this. They say, oh, what do I have to be grateful for? If you start writing down all the things you have to be grateful for, you will never stop. You, you, have, to, you have to say, that's enough of that, right? I'm grateful for this breath, right? I'm grateful for the fact I woke up. 
I mean, there's a, you know, forget all that. You know, I regret the, for, for the fact I have clothes to put on. You can, you can list them enormously, right? Okay. Step two, at night, before you go to bed, express your gratitude for the things that you are in the process of creating, for those ideals that you have, right? In the present tense, okay? I am grateful for my best-selling book, right? Why? Because you, it's the last thing you do before you go to sleep and you play the greatest trick on your subconscious mind when you do that. You go to sleep telling your subconscious mind that you're grateful for something and your subconscious mind says, uh, but it's not there yet. So it figures out how to impel you when you wake up the next morning to do what is necessary to make that reality come true. Okay? So it's a great psychological trick. This gratitude exercise, by the way, was taught to me many, many years ago by a guy who uh, was a self-made millionaire. He started off as like a used car salesman, um, ended up being a billionaire. He's a deeply religious guy, and so he um, got up in the morning and got down on his knees and said thank you to God for all the blessings in his life. And he went to bed at night um, saying thank you, praying to God, and saying thank you for all the blessings he was in the process of receiving. Okay? It's not a religious ritual. It's a psychological trick you play on yourself is what it is. Okay? You can use it as a religious thing if you want to. All right, so that's it. That's called count your blessings. Okay? Um, so what have I got left to say? I'm out of time. I've got, I'm 22 seconds over my time. I've got to go. I'd love to say a lot more. Don't have time. Last thing I want to say is I am grateful to each and every single one of you for being here today, for sharing what you shared with me today because I gained enormously. Genuinely, thank you for that. And a big, huge thank you to Mr. Robert Evans for providing this platform, for allowing us to express our voices out into the world in a bigger and better way. So thank you, Robert, and bye-bye. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>